Hello and welcome to Outside the Box Soaps. Um, today I am going to be making a soap that will be fragranced with Caramelized Crimson Pear. And that fragrance comes from Nature's Garden. So I'm going to be doing a hanger swirl and I've got um, some different colors here. I've got a crimson and I've got a green. I have a gold mica and I also have sort of a brownish. Uh, I thought they would be good color. That would be good color combo for um, the fragrance. And I also, I think that I'm going to be using some uh, white with titanium dioxide. So, what I have in here, I have um, sunflower oil, canola, castor, coconut, mango butter, olive oil, and sweet almond. I'm also going to be adding some goat milk powder, some kaolin clay, and I do need to put my sodium lactate into the lye water, which I didn't do. A little bit of gold color in there, but I think that will be fine. Okay. And then I am also going to Sorry about that. Just going to add some some oatmeal into the colloidal oatmeal into this as well. So uh, let's get started. I will get uh, my lye water in, and then I will get it stirring. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is add all my additives and then I'll bring you right so back. So all of the uh, additives are in here now and I don't want to take a chance on it getting too thick. So I'm going to start putting some color into cups. There's the brownish. There's the yellow. Next is the crimson, and then we've got some uh, green, and I know I said yellow, but that's actually gold, it's not yellow, so we'll just take a minute here to do a little bit of cleanup. bit of clumpy stuff in here that I did add a lot of powder um, after the live solution so I think I don't want to stick blend so I think that I'm going to whisk so let me just grab my whisk and the whisk seems to be doing a pretty good job so I'm going to just use that also to get my color stirred in so I'm going to go dark to light Actually, I should have went the other way. Let's uh, mix that. <laughs> Gonna go light to dark. So now I've got the gold mica. Not. <clears throat> go to the crimson. That's kind of turning a little orange. I'm hoping that that will um, go back to something a little redder. And the green is staying nice. I think I'm going to get some extra crimson mixed up here. I think I'm going to add that and hopefully that will, um, will help with the color. Yeah, that definitely made it darker. Okay. 
So, next, I'm going to take, uh, oh, I did want to add some titanium dioxide here, and I have it mixed with some uh, shimmer, pearl shimmer mica. So I do want to add that into my main batch. I think I'm going to need some more TD here. And I'm not going to go stark white. I think that kind of looks um, a little bit like the inside of a pear to me. So I think I'm going to just leave that as is for now. And I think that'll work just fine. So the next thing then will be fragrance. So let's get that moving. I'm gonna add most of it here. And I've not used this before. Um, I do have some of my uh, soap oils added into the fragrance uh, that I'm pouring now. And I also have some uh, vanilla color stabilizer in there because this does contain vanilla. So I don't know whether it's going to react in any kind of strange way, but I guess we'll find out very soon. All right, so far so good. Go to yellow. So far, so good. Green. And I don't really want to mess with that crimson color, so I think I'm going to wipe this off before I go in there. And then there is the brownish because sometimes pears have that uh, brownish sort of skin on them. Um, okay, so I think maybe just a tinge more titanium dioxide. Whoops, and I got some crimson in there, but it's not really enough to make a big difference. Okay, so since I'm going to be doing a hanger swirl, I think I'm going to let this just set for just a little bit because it's not quite, it's still pretty thin. I want to get it just a bit more traced, not a lot more. Um, maybe I can, um, maybe I can blend it a bit and get it there. Just a bit. Not too much because you know it will very quickly sneak up on you. And then all of a sudden you've got an out of control batch. You don't want that to happen. Okay, so these colors are thickening up a bit here nicely. They're also getting a lot of bubbles in them. <laughs> okay. okay. So, colors are looking good consistency-wise. Uh, 
This is getting a little bit thicker. Okay, so you think that I will get pouring now? So here's my mold and I'm going to start with the white base color and I'm putting in about half or so of that. Um, let me just pound it down. I actually think I'm going to put just a dip more in there. Okay. And then for colors, I think I'm going to start with this dark, which is like a brownish. And then I'm going to go to the yellow or gold mica next. Still looks a little thin. Uh, next I'm going to go to the green. And I'm just kind of just realized that's not quite in frame. So I'm just sort of pouring them in um, on top. And then the last one will be the crimson. Crimson in there. Okay. And we'll put a little bit more white. Okay, and I'm going to do one more pour with uh, what's left in the cups. So this is that brownish, if you will. Leave a little bit for the top. Next is the yellow. Okay. Then we've got for green. And then the last one is, this is the last pourable part of the crimson. Okay, now I'm going to give it another pound just to get the air bubbles out. So, got all of that pounded down, and I do see some of the some of the white flowing up. I'm getting a little nervous that this might have been too thin to pour for a hanger. So you know what? I think I'm going to let it just sit for a little bit and before I actually put the hanger in it and try to do my design, I think I'm going to let it just sit. So I will come back when it's turned a little bit thicker. Okay. So I think that this is uh, set up a bit more. Yep, it definitely is. So I'm going to put in the hanger. I'm going to go from side to side. I'm going to do 
up and down. And then try to go back to the in-between spots that I might have missed. And now I'm going to be doing circles. Circles at different depths. And I think that's about it. We'll see what we get out of it because it's still a little bit runny. Um, it looks swirled, but I don't know whether it was really firm enough. It's always one or the other. It's the dilemma. It's either too loose or it's just uh, too thick. So what I'm going to do now is try to um, put out a little coating of just white on top. Just lay it down on top. We don't want it to drop in. And by the way, no problems really with um, with the fragrance. So that is caramelized crimson pear from Nature's Garden and I did not have any issues with it. Just want to kind of smooth this layer out a bit. Make sure that we get white all along and in the corners. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, take what's left in my other pots here and I'm going to scrape that out and scribble it on top. So I will pause you for that and be right back when they're all cleaned out. So all of the colors have been emptied out. They're all in here. Um, it's still pretty loose, but I'm going to try to um, have a lot more white than I had of the other colors. So I'm going to see if I could bring some more of that color up. And I really wanted to sort of do a spoon sculpt on this, but it is really too thin. So I think that what I'm going to do is just let it sit for a little while um, because I do want to do a spoon sculpt and then I also would like to um, drop some mica uh, do some mica drops on it because these are really pretty shimmery micas and uh, would like them to be out on the top. So I'm going to let it sit for a while because the more I play with it the more I'm going to muddy it up and then when it gets a little thicker I am going to do a spoon sculpt and then I'm going to add the micas. So be back in a minute for you. Okay. I am ready now to um, start doing my sculpting and the rest of my decorating here. So I have a pipette and I'm just going to be adding some mica drizzles. So I'm going to be using basically the colors that are in the soap. And this brown, I don't know whether you can really see this on camera or not. I'll try to focus in for you on this, but this is called brown green. And before it actually soponifies uh, with the batter, it is a really pretty shimmery brown that has green tint to it. So let's see if I can zoom you in and Maybe move it a little bit. I don't know whether you can see for sure, uh, but it is really pretty. So I want to have some of that on the top. And these are all very shimmery micas that I used for this particular batch. So this is the green.
And then my last one is my gold sparkle mica. And so since I'm experimenting with this, I'm not sure whether I should have sculpted it first and then put the micas on or you put the micas on and then you sculpt it. So if the micas get all uh, washy, then I will just add some more as I go. So now I'm just going to take the spoon and sort of uh, curl. And it looks like the micas may have loosened it a little bit. Um, but I think it's still pretty workable and it looks like it's doing sort of what I wanted to do so I'm going to keep going and just want to sculpt a little bit and I just thought I would throw a tip in here and probably a lot of people already know this but if you're a beginner you may not know when I first started doing so I didn't think that I needed to wear my gloves during cleanup and I don't have a dishwasher that I can just use for soap so that means that I can't take all of my uh, caustic soapy stuff and just throw it into a dishwasher instead I have to hand wash everything and what I found was happening was that I was getting these little teeny tiny pinhole uh, lie burns are on the tips of my fingers and they were pretty painful and uh, I couldn't figure out what was why and then I said you know it must be happening while I'm doing cleanup because it's not happening while I'm doing soap I know that there's no no um, lie batter getting into my hands so anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in for any beginners that might be watching. You do, if you're, if you're hand washing your, your utensils and your tools, you are going to need to keep your gloves on to do that. And I always say one of the good things about waiting for soap to set up to finish is that I went off and I did my cleaning while I was waiting. So uh, just a little tip there for anybody who might be wondering and I would say you know if you're using disposable gloves seriously if they get ripped or if there's a little hole in them or something just put on and buy them in bulk and put on another pair of gloves while you're cleaning up it's definitely worth it not to go through the annoyance of uh, messing your hands up and I couldn't make any soap for a few days until they until they cleaned up. Okay, so here is what we've got. This is caramelized uh, crimson pear that you're looking at right there. And I do think I'm going to add a little bit of some glitter to it. Uh, just going to pick couple of quick ones out of here. So I'm using this very fine gold. This is actually I think nail glitter but it really shimmers very nicely in my finished soaps and I really do like it. And pears can be kind of golden. So I'm going to add some of that on here. And the only thing about these is that they are very thin, so you can't use a t-ball. You have got to just uh, go in with your fingers and grab them. So the next one is uh, Magnolia Yellow. Whoops. Put a little too much of that one in that spot. But... Yep, and at this point, blowing on it does absolutely nothing. So I need to get some little squeeze bottles um, that I see a lot of people using. So if anybody's watching this and you have those, if you could kind of tell me where you get them, I'd be very appreciative. Um, 
And I think maybe just a little bit of red orange, or should I put some iridescent? You know what? Let me just use some some iridescent um, because that I think just looks good on everything. And I had it here a few minutes ago, and I don't know where it disappeared to. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm just going to add some iridescent to this, and then that will just finish it, finish it off. It does smell, by the way, really, really good. It's funny, when I first opened the bottle, the first thing that I smelled was caramel, but as I've been working with it, the pear fragrance really comes through. So I think that it uh, it smells really great. I was at an event over the weekend and someone said they don't really like soaps that smell like food, which I kind of thought was kind of odd, but you know, people have different tastes and they do have soaps that aren't scented like food. Um, so anyway, this is my finished loaf. And I will bring it up for you so you can see it, shiny and glittery. And I'm going to definitely tape this because I do get that, that bow in the middle and I really don't like that. And since I put the goat milk powder in this, it will go into the fridge. So I'm not gonna gel it. And of course I will cut it and I will post pictures and let you see the finished bars. So thanks again for watching as always. Really appreciate it. And please remember to subscribe so you can keep going as I keep making new things. All right, take care and we'll see you in the next one.